response from the part of the part of the part of the part to say whether you receive me loud and clear. Uh, can I just have a come to our two? I will come again to get the first time. I will be responsible. Are you a female? Good evening, sir. We can clearly hear you. Ah, good. <laughs> So, can I at least have the people who are there? Uh, just introduce yourself, Arun. Just give the name and uh, say from where you are. I mean, it's very odd for me to do these kind of lectures because uh, I usually am used to meeting people and talking to them directly. I get it, then you it doesn't matter. No? The early thing, we have also got to change. We have to into a, almost uh, the audience. I'm not at all used to it. Uh, can I can I just have uh, see the people who are there? Just try to tell the name and where you are from, which organization you are connected with. Go ahead. Yeah, just unmute yourself and just speak. Who? Yes, I am uh, Udita Kalansuria and I am from uh, Orange Electric. Orange Electric, good. Others, please. Maybe you can see the screen. And, yeah. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, I am Manjula from Hatch. Good. Samra, can you have the green here? I, I can read what the same thing. Okay, sure. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Others, others, go ahead, please. I'm just giving some instruction to my colleague over here. So I am Sanjay uh, from Sri Lanka Air Force. Good. Yeah. Three of you are there, and how many are there? Three of them? Two, two, two more. Harshan Nanakar from Irrigation Department. Uh -huh. So, three is to one now. Sorry? Only one from the public sector. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Take the apples out. Yeah. Yes. Who, who, that's another guy, right? Yeah, your lady, I don't know. Who is that? I'm no person. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I think we let's not, let's not waste our time. Uh, I need a timer on the side. Yeah. Time in the beginning of the time. You see if I can see the timer so that I can tell my. In fact, I have about 74 slides. It's much too long for a three hour presentation. Uh, I have put a lot of stuff. And before that, you know, let's, let's, uh, until the other join or whatever you like to just relax, huh? Just take a little bit. I'm going to ask you questions now.
Okay, okay. Did you all enjoy? Yeah, problem. I have problem with my height. I have five five feet no inches, right? No, yeah, I'm five five feet two inches. Okay. Uh, did you all enjoy? You all enjoy? You guys? Yes. Ah, uh, good. So, why did I play this? For one purpose, you know, just to keep your mind a uh, little bit focused on my lecture and to get your attention. That's point number one. Point number two. No important. Right, that guy is clever. Okay, he's clever, no doubt. But if those other people, how many people were there? Did you notice how many people were there? Anybody? Six people. Six. Huh? Yeah. Six. How many people? Huh? Six. 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 Others agree. How many people are there? Come on, you're wrong. You're wrong, my man, my friend. Ten. Huh? How much? How Nine. Many? Nine. Oh, no, no, you're wrong again. Engineers, huh? Come on, you can count. You can count. Sorry, eight. No. I'm sorry, you're wrong. You know, the, the same thing I do uh, for undergraduates as well. I just put on, you know. So we always do it just like our Sri Lanka team, you know. You are very confident about yourself. Uh, so you make mistakes, right? They are only seven. But think about it. Two people on the trumpets that were played, and the fifth, the guy, and there was a in one corner. There was another huge fellow with a huge—I don't know what you call it, trumpet or whatever. I mean, there was a girl in one of those classes, and she he was doing music, and she was. I said about trumpet. They said, "Don't worry, you're not. It's not trumpet." And he gave me some. He gave me some. Can't believe my trumpet. Remember that. So there was other guy who came round and drop like in a mystical way. He lifted the fellow. Why I showed that? It's all about engineering. So when you go and try to do something, you want to entertain. You want to do something for the others. You have to have a lot of audience. You have to have a lot of uh, cooperation. Right, and then only the entire music piece was presentable, enjoyable, and was beautiful. Even the people were highly entertained. Right, so it's all about working in teams and absolutely good coordination, understanding. Right, and everybody did their work, and more than anything else. To produce that piece, those guys had to stretch their limits, go out of the comfort zone. Then only we got the best stuff. What much more, right? So these are all about kind of engine that we do, and you know that my credentials. I will pass the interview this session, and uh, let's start. You know the proper thing. So before I start. Uh, saying what I want to share with you. What a very nice. Uh, if you some of my favorite videos, what an anecdote. Uh, if you can put my computer so I'll just have a look at it and then uh, at the same time I'll keep on talking there. Okay, this is still this is still not take uh, my mind off you. Before I start anything, I want to share with you some of my very favorite videos, both and anything. You just saw one, a few of them coming up, right? Uh, right. So my first quote is from a book gifted to me by a gentleman called Arup Roy Chowdhury, a very clever uh, CEO of a government institution in India called National Thermal Power Corporation, NTPC. If anybody is uh, it is about the power industry, they know. It was a very powerful organization in uh, India, right? And he has a record of being uh, CEO of a public corporation, not NTPC. Before that, uh, they just turned to, and they are supposed to have had about 300,000 employees. Right, all the perhaps you know quarter of our public service together in one company, and I have been there to their 
Girwama something in India. I, I was taken to the research center. So, the research center itself was five five story blocks in one place. That's only a research and development center. Is it a wonder that India is focusing so much? And there's time that, you know, Right. So, uh, is it a wonder that, you know, India is very good? Okay, next land or next place in right? When I went to India for the first time, maybe almost 25 years ago, we thought that we were far, far ahead of India. Uh, the quality of goods was so bad, right? If you take a piece of paper and the paper is in this, uh, just like, you know, uh, tissue paper. If you take a string, uh, fine. I, I had to buy some. All of them. Right? To buy something. And that joke was quite so that we can know in the early part of the mid 1980s. Where are we? Where are we now? Where are we? There are some more things to come to surprise you. Right? Where are we now? So, this guy wrote a book, and I actually it was in 2014 when I met him. And uh, he had written it just coming out of the uh, printer. See, my first quote is from that book, Arup uh, Roy Chow. They're very good friends. It's, uh, the book is called Management by Idiots. Management by Idiots. Right? So if you, so it says, you don't blow your own trumpet. It's always coming. Okay. You don't blow your own trumpet. Others will use it as a spittoon. Spittoon means you can have a paddictum. You can have a paddictum. A lot of people don't know what paddictum is. Unless uh, you go to a tourist house and then you see the particular being sent around uh, because the Buddhist monks will be in detail and fitting onto the Padikka. Right? Those days, Padikka was a very common uh, appliance in the Sali because when people come, you offer a beetle and they kala 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 Padikka. Right? So if you don't blow your own trumpet, others will use it as a speaker. This was the picture. You know what it is. Now, there, interestingly, I was in Washington DC sometime, and the ambassador was this late, uh, very famous uh, ambassador, right? Dan Danapala. And he hosted us for a dinner in his uh, home. And he uh, happens to be a classmate of Bill Clinton. And both of them had the picture that was from the sitting room. Were two of them, Bill Clinton and Dan Danavala, during campus days in the USA, during the Trump again. And he, he had this uh, And then he, 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 after the dinner, you know, we had this like banter. So he was just coming out with a small story. Uh, it's actually a joke. Uh, he was laughing himself out. Uh, he said uh, at one time when Bill Clinton was the uh, president, one of our own ministers, have gone to Washington DC and uh, there had been a big you know, party of working in the Rose Garden and uh, he has taken uh, with minister and he the party. Then as usual, Bill Clinton had started playing the trumpet and yeah, so if you look, go to the internet, you will see this trumpet stand. It's made out of uh, wood. It's a nice uh, carbon wood the gadget. Where yeah, you treat this trumpet like this. Okay, so after a couple of drinks, our uh, guy was very okay, hi, and he had to ease himself out for the first job, the job number one, small job. So he was going around looking for a place, and he suddenly sees this from the upside down, right? Or just like this. You know what next, right? So uh, he was joking, and he was laughing. So that's the way, okay? 
you would have said that was the call. Thank you. Uh, right, let's move on. And uh, I'm very interested in uh, reading more scriptures and things like that. And uh, the, it's from the, uh, if there are Hindus, they'll immediately uh, talk about the Vedic scriptures. Now, Vedic, Vedic scriptures, uh, recent, until recently, it was taught, they are about 3,000 to 4,000 years old. They were written in clay, clay uh, tablets. And uh, further research has revealed some of them are even 6,000 years old. So that means the scriptures have been written 6,000 years ago. And so just for them to write 6,000 years ago, they think they were written by the Rishis. Uh, how long they would have been practicing these uh, behavior patterns? Well, this is what I think of. So these Vedic scriptures are very important, right? right. So these from the, there are so many Vedas, Rig Veda, very famous saying, when there's harmony between the mind, I'm showing my head, right? Heart, right? And resolution. Then nothing is important. Now what does it mean? Three things. Intelligence, emotions, and the feeling, the character, the resolution. Three things, huh? We, I don't know why people, when they say mind, you refer to the brain. Now there are recent, more recent who said that says even heart has a mind. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a particular expert. But they were connecting. Uh, heart can also think. Not, not in the same way. In fact, like, you know, maybe a project process are thinking all the time, right? Uh, so uh, maybe because of that, they say even the heart has a bit of mind. And of course, the brain, we associate with mind, right? We think. So nothing is impossible. I firmly believe in this, my dear friend. I firmly believe in this. You see this in a moment, why I'm saying I believe in this. Now, unfortunately, there's no audience, but I would ask this question from them. I'm asking this question from you. You can stop me at time and you can intervene, right? You say I'm a fool. So I say nothing is impossible. So somebody can ask me, you are a fool. Why? Can a man go to the moon? Because he thinks and believes and does it? I would say the person thinks that he is going to the moon himself is out of his head, right? So you only are limited to a certain extent by what you think you want. It. Your mind dictates. You can try to mount a mountain, right? And I have done that thing. I'm very old, right? So you may think that I'm not old. I'm 68 years old, right? So sometimes even my wife says, don't do that, don't do this. So recently we went to the doctor and, you know, she was telling him, you know, uh, he stretches himself too much. You know, when I ask him to... Uh, do this, he goes a step further, and I cut trees, so I do various kinds of things. I do gardening and you know, I stretch myself. And more than anything else, she says, he goes around and he goes on. He's complete, right? All the whites are like that. Uh, this doctor is saying, uh, he does about uh, two and a half hours of exercise. I don't do it. Hey, two and a half hours. And then I do about two and a half hours of walk. And then I go to the gym and do another one hour of workout. So he was, she was very worried about what was he doing And uh, the doctor was laughing. So I tried to change him. No doctor, he is doing too much. No, 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 doctor, he don't know, it's perfectly all right. If he doesn't uh, feel bad about it, he didn't do it. So this is why I stretch my limits. The maximum, of course, if I feel that I can't do it, I won't do it. So my mind helps me do certain things. Heart. Heart is associated with passion. Now my, one of my passions is teaching. So I was in the electrical board for 36 years. My initial offer for a job was to, you know, my own university. Because Sam Collins still uh, is joking. For two months or two years have not come. You know why? I was offered a job in the university. 
ability lecture as a lecture lecture. Three of us are offered. All three of us, by that time, were employed in the three board, and all three of us went. And uh, two of them stayed back to talk with Sam Taranaki. I said, "Sir, give me two years. I'll work in the CV and come back." So whenever he sees me and now, Tommy, we asked you two years, <clears throat> right? Because my passion is there. So I, I, I in fact thought immediately, uh, right? I think it's been the same. Now I'm doing almost full time lecture. Right, so my passion is there. So heart is associated with passion. Then the resolution. Resolution is once I make a resolution, I resolve to do it. <clears throat> I resolve to do it no matter what. And I'm going to do it. These are very important ingredients for an individual. Right, you we'll see what I'm talking about later. So nothing is possible. Nothing is impossible. I do believe in this. So just look at this next video. There you are. So I got to believe it, right? Mind, heart, and uh, uh, you know, mind, heart, and resolution. You can't do anything. If you are stunned, if you are stunned, watch this and tell me your opinion. Look at this. Okay, I think perhaps you can guess who that person is. So, uh, when I did that, I was 63 years old. Yeah, but it's not really stunk I did. Uh, we, I took a swing, uh, got from a huge tree onto a uh, uh, lake. So, uh, why I show this is because there were young people who did not even attempt to do this. Some of them went up. And the girls were crying and they came down. So it's not that you know you know, you know, you know, you know difficult thing to do, but still the resolution to just to do it myself. Is a problem. Right. So don't you think that I I we have to believe what I said? Mind, heart, and resolution. So the next and and perhaps the last one. The Lee Kuan Yew, most of you know who Lee Kuan Yew is. And uh, let's see what he has got to do. I just, just listen to the words, right? Listen to the words. Right. Listen to the words carefully. I can tell you that when I met the SIA pilots, I didn't meet them on TV. I met them face to face. So five feet across the table so they can see me and see whether I'm still vigorous, able to campaign and take them on, whether it's worth taking me on. And I offered them two choices. Either you argue, you stop this intimidation, which is what it was, bringing SIA, SIA right down, disrupting services, ruining its reputation, Millions of dollars worth of advertisements and sales ruined within a matter of two weeks. I gave them a choice. Continue this and I will, by every means at my disposal, teach you and get the people of Singapore, help me teach you a lesson you won't forget. And I'm prepared to start all over again or stop it get back to work restore discipline then argue your case took them 65 minutes and they decided okay it isn't worth the fight 
Why? Because they know they'll lose. They know that I'm prepared to ground the airline. They know that I can get the airline going again without them. And let there be no mistakes about this. Whoever governs Singapore must have that iron in him or give it up. This is not a game of cards. This is your life and mine. I've spent a whole lifetime building this. And as long as I'm in charge, nobody's going to knock it down. Okay. Probably you have heard about Lee Kuan Yew. I don't need to say anything more. Right? I'm sure most of you would have even watched this. But it shows the character of Lee Kuan Yew. Right? Not that I wholeheartedly agree with everything that he did. So there have been a lot of uh, things to told about that he talked about him. And also, much more, his bad are far outweighed for the good things that he did. Where can he bring the Singapore from a mud hole. So when he got Singapore, it was called just a rock on the ocean and it was a fishing village. You know, so he brought the Malayan kingdom. So he built the whole thing up. So Singapore was thrown out of Malayan Federation in 1965. In his own words, Singapore was a swamp. Swamp and Marogi. Right? Singapore was full of gangsters. He said he had a few millions of people to account for. What can you learn from this man? Remember, this is the person who's supposed to have. In 1965, I will make Singapore excellent. Now, how people are saying, you want to be like Singapore. I still remember because in 1965, I was in great uh, fire. Right. The teacher who taught me, I think, for an athlete, I'll be that time. But a person who was like me, you know, very good school, but right. The teachers used to come to teach us in their own class. So that is the kind of economic power that I have. Right. So we all they, they all went up. We all went down. We all went down. That means something really, really wrong. You got to understand. So what would you say about this man? He had immense courage. And who will look back on his vision? Uh, who, who never looked back on his vision. The focus, he wanted to go the way that he wanted to take Singapore. Right? It was firm of his conviction that he can turn around the country. He stayed focused. He stayed away from all those who did not fall in line with the commitment to rebuild the nation. I'm sure you have heard about many, many stories. But this man we even put his own friends into jail. You know that guy who uh, went on a, a trip, short holiday, and that he was a deputy minister in his cabinet. And the moment he landed in Singapore, he was arrested and put in jail. Not his close colleagues there. Right? Why? He got to know that on his same trip, another business associate went along with him. Getting nothing, but he wants to give the whole world a lesson, whole country a lesson, right? You can go on a study, no, 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 that doesn't matter. But the moment a business person goes with him, what can what cannot happen there? So, the discipline, discipline, discipline is the key. I'm sure you have also been now. Realizing the discipline at every level in the country is going down. For whatever reason, I don't know. I'm a sociologist to under uh, to analyze that. So this cannot allow to happen. So the negative people, they he kept the memory. Did not serve everyone with the same spoon. Right? There is also a saying that if you try to please everyone 
you end up pleasing no one. Part of a good character of a person. You cannot be trying to please everyone. As engineers, you must be the same. Very soon you are going to get into management uh, positions. So you have to take certain decisions. Some decisions may affect certain. I was the CEO of Ceylon Electricity Board. I, I retired as general manager. Sometimes people used to come and cry in front of me. I sympathized with them. I empathized with them. I could, I could give whatever relief possible. But there's a limit. There's a limit. Right? And from that point onwards, you have to take certain stern decisions. Right? So that doesn't mean that you have to be unkind to people. But there's a saying that if you try to please everyone, you will end up pleasing no one. Right? And we have heard this story, right? What will happen if you try to treat everyone with the equal measure? Mama Hamotam Vidanikam Hendri. Don't we all agree? Don't we all say that? In Tamil, we say, Anevarakkum Ore Arandial Sevai Tehire. I treat everyone in the same spirit. You all agree? As I said that I don't do that, so you won't agree on that. Let me show you why you should not agree. Take three vessels. Three vessels of, let's say that's the capacity of three people. Right? So if you, if you give certain responsibility to a person, it's like serving them with the same spoon. Look at this spoon. Try to fill up this with the same spoon. What happens? <laughs> this is open. We can't, we can't possibly take this response. For this guy is just right. For him, you can give more and more and more response. As I said before, I was the CEO of TV. And sometimes people come and with a grumbling uh, voice, they say, So, what am I better than you? I'm used to not paying that. I'm sure, you know, you have heard the same thing. You have also told that from your, from your experience. You are loading me with everything. Be happy, man. Ladies or gentlemen, I, I don't know who you are. I only heard some male voices. Well, there are ladies and men. If people are giving you and more, more and more responsibility, why do they do that? They know that you can carry it down. So don't grumble. Accept it open heart, open hand. Try to perform the best of your ability. There's a lot to learn from the people of this caliber. And one of my final quotes, one of my favorite quotes, I'm thankful for all those who said no to me. Because of them, I did it myself. I'm doing it myself. That's what I did. The next couple of minutes, I go for five minutes, I'm going to tell about this part. I don't know how many of you have heard about this uh, project called Upper Kotsale Hydropower Project. I started the study of the Upper Kotsale project in 1992. A couple of years, <clears throat> 1994, uh, from the beginning of 1995, the study was over. Environment impact assessment was done. It was open for public, it was debated. Right? After everything, the Japanese government wanted to fund it. And just before the Japanese government, that was something I still remember, was some in February 1995. They came with the money and we were ready to negotiate the loan. And it was 9th of February or something, we had the uh, 12th of February, we had the, the public hearing. And then they started delivering the central environment authority started delivering about the units. In fact, the Ministry of Power and Energy, is the project approving agency, did approve the project. And the law of the countries, they must receive the conference from the Central Environmental Authority. So when we sent it to the Central Environmental Authority, they debated, 
they had uh, discussions with us, with the Ministry of Foreign Energy, and declined to give the approval. That was on the 25th of February, if I remember correctly. The Japanese were here, negotiating the loan. 1995. The person who was the, who was the deputy, deputy country director here, on Mr. Ida, six years down the road, he said something else. I'll, let, I'll tell you all that later. From 1995, we struggled and struggled and struggled. We did everything possible. We never gave up. We appealed. And the appeal also, we were almost failed. Right? And there was a court case. We fought the court case and the Attorney General called us and said, there's no way that this case is going to finish for the next 20 years. If you are interested in doing this project, discuss with the people who are opposing you and come to some understanding. So the Attorney General himself, which he doesn't do usually, uh, got all the parties together, of course not in his chambers or whatever, and we were to compound the case in court. So fortunately, the, by that time, the Ministry of Environment had changed, the Secretary was had changed, and the Secretary uh, looked at it and finally gave them to it. Right? And that was, I think, in somewhere in 1999. So, it was four years we struggled. And you'd have remembered we got the money in 2002. And from 2002 again, all held for play. There's a video clip. I did the last year, you know, 2022. We also in the memorial lecture. I'll upload it to the uh, this lecture. You can have a good look at the entire project. How hard we fought, everybody, including the political authority. The politicians tried to kill me. They said, fire to the house that I was living. How should I have a in the house? You know that the house is all wooden, right? In up country, Salawakani. Nothing was burned. For a problem, because they, they put petrol. They gave it something else, it was burned. So Peter got evaporated, I know the, the fired house, and it's a, a cold place. The entire ceiling was wooden. I also told them, right? Nothing happened. Only thing that happened was the fridge was just like a molten uh, plastic. And all the uh, windows, uh, curtains were burnt. And all the furniture, the, nothing got catch hot fire. The, the, Paint was crumbled. Right? And there were so many other attempts to hit me and do various things. Nothing happened to me. Nothing happened to me. I'm telling you. Right? So this 150 we got project. The cost was 40 billion Sri Lankan rupees. It was started in 1992, the studies that I said. stalled due to protests on environmental, social, and political ground. Finally, it commenced in 2006, right? And completed in 2012, 20 years. 20 years. All these 20 years, I was in the project. I was in the project. Believe me, you check the video. Right? I firmly behind this project. Never gave up. But my resolution was to do the project. I knew that it was right. It was the right thing to do. So I was passionate to do. And I was resolved to do it. How did I do it? How do I do it? Will you do that? Will any of you do that? 20 years, fight for the same project? Of course I did many things. For in charge of planning. I did the planning. I did the normal uh, mitigation measures for all the projects that were in CV. So I did the in charge of planning. So as that, of course, I had my project manager and project directors. With them, I did it. I kept on fight, focus. So how do I do it? How do I do it? 
My guiding light was a quotation from the Bible. If you know what is right to do and not doing, it's a sin. I knew doing Apokotan and Haitupa project was the right thing to do. My mind said it's correct. I was reasonable and I did not want to be a sinner. So I did it with notwithstanding any obstacle, any impediment. No one believed that I will do so much of opposition. Even the deputy, I told you about the deputy country director, one Mr. Ida. When he went, he, he, he told me, and when he came back again uh, for the signing of the loan, that was in 2002, he, came, he was here. In some other mission, then we invited him for the uh, signing for the loan. After that, we had a small party. Mm -hmm. It only is not of everybody. When I went in 2002, uh, 1995, from Sri Lanka, <coughs> I never thought this project will ever be a reality. Will ever be a reality. But we made it a reality. We made it a reality. What would happen if I gave up? No, I thought I had to talk to the same time. Some even wish that I fail. I thank them all. <coughs> How did I do it? Because everyone said I will not do it. So I took it up as a challenge. I did it myself. I stayed focused and was not swayed by the noise around. There were many decisions of the cabinet to do it and then again not to do it. To do it and not to do it. Do it and not to do it. The cabinet, cabinet of Sri Lanka is like that. You know that very well, right? There was a time that people used to say, reverse cabinet. They take a cabinet decision today, uh, issue a gazette, and the gazette is reversed a couple of weeks, weeks later. This is Sri Lanka. This is Sri Lanka. I'm not telling lies. These are facts. So can we ever progress? No. So we, are, we go one step, come back two steps. Again, go two steps further and come back one. So in the same place. In the same place. Even the last decision says to rescind all previous decisions of the uh, cabinet. Not to do it. Of course, there were some loopholes. I made use of the loopholes. And I, I did it notwithstanding this decision. I did it with notwithstanding this decision to rescind the decision. I ignored it till I'm surviving. Of course, I'm a Christian. As a Christian, I have faith in God. But I'm, what I'm doing is right. The person who wrote the cabinet decision, the last decision, was my greatest support. Was my greatest support. Later on, I thank my Abakot Police staff who only had faith in me. I turned to engineering. It is not our. Now I'm talking of engineering. Okay. Who is an engineer? He may be doing various answers. Can anyone give me an answer? Who is an engineer? Anybody? Anybody? Half of it I'll give you. Anybody can respond, right? Just unmute your mic and say, who is an engineer? Anybody? Come on, man. I, I don't see you guys, but I know that you are there. 15 of them. Who is an engineer? No answers. You know, I'm almost doing this course for the undergraduates. And about two weeks ago, they gave me wonderful answers. I'm sure you have been in the practice field at least five, six years. You should be able to tell me who is an engineer. Come on. That's all about engineering, right? We are talking about engineering. Okay? The profession. Anybody? <laughs> right. Nobody sees your face, man. Go ahead and tell me. Who is an engineer? They are all sweet. Okay. What to do? What do you expect to do as an engineer? Are you prepared to face the challenges of engineering education, gain experience, and become a fully qualified professional engineer? Yesterday, we had the induction ceremony of chartered engineers, 201 people. 
engineers. You all are still associate members, I believe. <clears throat> you are striving to get that added title or chartered engineer with more responsibility. Where your signature is valid for many things, right? You are civil engineers. Your signature is now valid to pass certain bills. The electric engineers, your signature is valid to pass the electric insulator. Your signature signifies India, right? So this we have we have gone through the education process. You are now in the experience phase, all gone, and you are on the threshold. Of becoming a fully qualified professional. I don't know whether you have heard about this. There's a guy called Herbert Clark, who an American. This fun, I used to have this fun in the when you had the audience. But I can't have fun with you guys because you're not. Yeah. Anybody wants to say something? Okay. Herbert Clark, who an American. So the American was traveling in a first class cabin from London to New York. And he befriended, befriended a first class thing. It was people who travel in the first class go there. The first class people, right? Others couldn't afford to go in the first class. And his voyage took about three months. Go it was in the Atlantic. It was a steam, a steamship, carrying on coal. It taking a lot of time to cross that country. Now they're crossing about 10 days. Ago. So London to New York. He's an American, and the lady was a British, British first class, you know, I respected him. So they were associated with each other. Could have been eating breakfast and dinner and lunch together. They were dancing, they were drinking wine, and they were playing cards. He lunch, right? Rolled up in the seat. So, on the last day, when uh, they were to alight from the ship, they saw the they saw the New York Harbor in yonder. They sat down for the last break. And after the breakfast, they got their backs up and they were to alive. Before that, this lady had an urge to ask the question. And this is the way she asked the question. The lady asked, I hope you will forgive my dreadful curiosity. Not like in Sri Lanka, you know, people don't ask personal questions. Sri Lanka, our setup going on here, our cohesion. Mother, da, okay, mama, you know, papa, you know, and I know, poor connect for them, right? And you ask that, ask me, Madela, how many children you have, how many children you have, what is your doing, what are you, all kinds of things. In other countries, they don't really, they really ask for personal questions. But finally, she had to ask. I don't know whether you can give me an answer what that question was. The question she asked was, I hope, this is the way they asked her, I hope you will forgive my dreadful curiosity. But I should like to awfully to know what was the question. Anybody? Anybody? Are you? I don't know, South to audience again. Anybody? Nobody willing to give answers, right? He finally asked this question. What is your profession? What did he, what did he say? Anybody? He said, I'm an engineer. You know what happened? You think that the lady jumped and hugged him and say, oh, my house, my engineer. And after that, you know what happened? Her face fell and she was really disgusted. She was angry with herself and she snapped back and said, she snapped back and said, I thought you were a gentleman. Aha. Uh -huh. You think you guys are gentlemen. First class gentlemen. First class ladies. Engineers. That's what people think now. But those days, Engineers were never categorized as first class gentlemen. Why? In those days, they were smelling from a mile, the engineers were smelling. Sweat, grease, dirt. They were overall. 
nothing else. Once they go to the pub in the night, they go with the overall. Right? They are dirty hands. They were rough people, tough people. Spoke often in filth. You don't believe that, right? Had very bad mannerisms. Therefore, not recognized in the society. I joined the Ceylon Electricity Board in 1979. At that time, there were engineers who were coming to office in shorts, stockings, brown shoes, short sleeve shirts. They always had a bathroom. You know what a bathroom is? Walking stick. And you want to tell me why they had the bathroom? Because they couldn't walk. Is that, is that why they, did the, they had the bathroom? Not very nonsense. Why did they have the bathroom? I, ha I have known these people. They're very senior guys. They were just joined the team. Can you not tell me why they have the bathroom? Anybody? Nobody can think, right? And you should be thinking people. They can eat the people. Absolutely. Somewhere. Absolutely. Who is that young man? What is your name? Narakar, sir. Okay. From where? Irrigation department. All right. Good. Aha. You know that, right? You know stories in the sites. You go around hitting people, man. Those days. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Enter trade, you will come on you and you will be removed. I'm not saying that was good. I'm not saying that was good. That was the mannerism of the engineers of the farm. I know some engineers who were very senior. The best word they could use on people was Yako. Yako was the best word that they used. You can just imagine what kind of words they used on people, right? So will they like the engineer? But now, now, engineers are well recognized in society. They have very clean hands. They wear perfume. You have very good medicine. I can see that you don't even talk back. In society looks up to them. Annape engineer Uputta. We know that how much the family get the respect. Right? So people look up to it. The problem is. Do we live up to that standard? Do we do our job properly? To earn that respect? You can't command respect, right? You know that. You have to earn the respect. So incidentally, this Herbert Clark Hoover was the only engineer who went on to become an America, the president of the United States of America. The Hoover Dam built after this engineer. Right. Who is an engineer? This theory is absolute theory. Right? It's taken from the Wikipedia. I'm going to give you three definitions, right? Three or four definitions. I'm going to give you what it is an engineer. That is my job today, right? To talk to you about engineering and our profession. An engineer is a professional practitioner of engineering, obviously, concerned with applying scientific knowledge, mathematics, and ingenuity. To develop solutions for technical problems. Engineers design materials, structures, machines, and systems. While considering the limitations imposed by practicality, safety, and cost. I can also add the word environment. The word engineer is derived from the Latin root ingenium, meaning cleverness. Cleverness. If you have already passed the degree of engineering, from which your place, the accepted accredited uh, degree or graduate diploma, for that matter, you are a clever guy. Never underestimate your cleverness. 
only clever people can become engineers. Of course, clever people also become artists. Clever people also become musicians. What I'm trying to say is, if you are not clever, you can never be engineer. The amount of rigorous engineering course that we have followed. The, if you have done the A-level mathematics, that's I think the toughest exam in the whole world. Right? If you have come out with good results and become an engineer, that itself shows that you are a clever man. So never underestimate yourself, right? No, never underestimate what you can do. That's the most important. That's why I'm harboring on this, laboring on this point over and over again. You are clever people. Engineers are grounded in applied sciences and their work in research and development is distinct from the basic research focus of science. The work of engineers forms the link between scientific discoveries and the applications that meet the needs of society. There are key words. Mathematics, science, and meeting the needs of the family. I must tell you, my dear friends, I know a few engineers who have given up their early, early life and going to groups. I know a few of you. I'm sure you have also heard about them. That's good. At least they will do something for them too. For the next Bhavi. So if you are not prepared to meet the needs of society, even now, think about yourself. You are engineering. Engineering is all about doing something for the society. Of course, you do something for yourself. You marry, you have raise a family, you buy a car, you build a house. But if you really think what your role is, to do something for others to benefit. You build roads. You are the only one who is traveling on the roads. You build buildings. You are the only one who is uh, occupied that building. You build power stations. You build uh, transmission lines. For whom? For the benefit of others. Large segment of population. We are best of engineer doctors, specialists. They treat one patient at a time. You in a large hospital, they treat one patient at a time. They may treat thousands of patients. We, our work, are used by millions. See the difference? So if you are not committed to meet the needs of society, then you cannot do anything. Remember that very well. Remember that very well. Don't make a mistake of that. Don't ever say they will be Mahakaratara. Never say that. Enjoy your profession. Therefore, the central focus of engineering profession is the application of scientific and mathematical, mathematical knowledge, scientific knowledge, and these societal needs. So this intersection is meaning. So if you ask those who are in the audience, there's none in the audience today. What does this shape? So, so some people say it's like a like a grain of weaker in the attack on like a wall attack on Don't you think it's like a what is it? What is what is it? What if what is something that we all like? So engineering is like that. Whatever we do, people should like it. If you build a road, people should love to drive on that. So whatever, whatever work that you do should be likable to the entire society. So addressing the needs of society. What if what it does the need of my, my, my stomach. To see the analogy, I'm just drawing a parallel, and I'm very serious, very serious. 
Of course, this is not all. We are human beings. So we have our own traits. We have our own traits. What are those traits? Analysis and creative. As I, once again, I am going to tell you. If you are not analytical, you won't be doing anything. You know that. You, you, I don't have to tell you. We are very good in analysis. That's why we are doing anything. But not only I live now, a tremendous amount of creativity also within you. So some of our engineers are highly analytical. And some of our engineers are highly creative. Right? Still we are engineers. So for example, as engineers apply commercial software to the solutions of an engineering problem, the application of analytical skills per se may involve very little or no creativity. <coughs> we are dealing with computer programs. We are doing a lot of analysis. We allow the program to run. We put in the data of it. A lot of analytical skills. Your brain power is working for that, along with the computer. So when you get the result, you should be able to analyze them. Understand whether the result is good or bad. So that's analysis. Hardly any creative. On the other hand, an engineer may design an ergonomic office space with very little analytical skills. You know what ergonomics is? Design for maximum comfort, efficiency, safety, and ease of use, especially in the world. So creativity blended with analytics. And some of us have a little bit of more creativity, some of us have a little bit more analysis. Hence, let us look at engineering from these perspectives. So here we have all four circles. So this is the engineering that we cannot forget. Interflexion. It's a society, scientific knowledge. And some of us have highly analytical skills. So we are here. A, a sector engineering. We are highly creative engineers. So we belong to the C category. And we have a large number of people who are in the B. A little bit of analysis and a little bit of creativity. We are all in the You can look down on a person who is highly creative. We want them. We want creativity. We don't have the creativity, all the beautiful buildings that are come up, coming up in Colombo. This building, this building, that building, and world over you see the beautiful buildings, right? I was in Beijing and I he saw the IBM headquarters. Oh, beautiful! So like a huge sea, standing in the air, huge sea, and that entire sea was full of office people, created. And analysis to take it. Right? So there are also one, two, three sectors. We'll talk about that later. Now, first we we'll analyze A, B, C category engineers. Now, no one is superior to other, right? So please don't make a mistake. I'm not saying A class engineers are the best, the C category engineers are the best, or the B category engineers supersede both of them. No way. No way. No way. So that's your personal trait, right? We can't change it. Now, for instance, if you ask me to draw a tree, you might think I have drawn a weak, weak, because of the and that was I can't, I'm, I can't draw. That's good. I draw, but very ugly. Right? So my creativity is a bit low. Sector A represents the intersection of purely analytical talents with engineering domain, within the engineering domain. This may be used to represent the engineering science. <coughs> I don't know you know that the engineering course has a certain basket of engineering science. Right? Among the trades that you do. An ability to model complex systems and predict their responses to the various inputs under varying conditions. Actually, though the computer comes out with the numbers, it's you who has modeled the computer with the necessary input. 
the span should be so much, the height should be so much, all that you have done in your own head. And that's what you input in the computer and find out that solution is feasible. Sort of energy is already gone. The segment of engineering has, of course, been the subject of intense development for the last half century and has benefited most directly from the availability of fast digital computers. And you know what the computers can do now. With all these artificial integers coming in, <coughs> very soon, it has been required. They say already doctors are becoming designed. And they also say uh, lawyers are becoming designed. There will be a day where the engineers will also be there. I hope that will be in your lifespan. Fair either. My lifespan is not because I thought that your lifespan. Right? Still, I don't think that will happen. Sector C, high creativity. Highly creative engineers. The intersection of our creative capacity with the engineering domain will be viewed as <clears throat> representing those sudden intuitive leaps often responsible for revolutionary advances in technology called significant novel, as well as those aspects of engineering not yet fully supported by engineering science that remain more an art than a science. I'm sure you are a practicing engineer. Sometimes you grapple with a problem. You simply can't find a problem, a solution. You get frustrated. You work, work, work. And after some time, you may sit up on the clock. Maybe you are going to call it. Right? I'm only sure to have to do that. That's you in gender. I'm sorry, I don't know what the difference is. Let's go and uh, have a question. Right? We're going to have a balloon. You break out, right? And after some time, you go home. Sleep. Next day also you get up lazy. I don't know how to get by the lazy. All of a sudden, sometime, sudden talk comes. You yourself I cannot even uh, the reason why I thought of that solution. You can't even analyze and put that into the illusion. Then you probably Maybe when you are sitting on the throne in the morning, you know, sitting on the throne. My wife says you are in the throne. You see, he calls me after 20 minutes. Shavi, you are still there. I'm also sitting in the throne, right? Maybe on the throne now while you are having a shower, you get a sudden idea. Then you are itching to come to work to share your solution with the other colleagues. And the other colleagues are how does it happen? Don't ask me much. This is part of the idea. Maybe highly creative solution. You require creativity, right? To create it. Let's look at sector B again. They are the people who have both creativity and analytics to a certain extent. <clears throat> and we used to represent engine design much real world problem problem. This sector includes activities ranging from developing innovative products and processors to creating an innovative bridge design to developing a new control process for petrochemical production of water. Petrochemical production is, you think it's engineering, <laughs> it's highly chemical, right? The chemical engineers will be much better than that. Well, of course, chemistry is something that we can't predict, right? You change the formula, you can be a completely different product, right? So, things change very fast, okay? So, you have to also keep abreast with the So, all that is required. So, we require all categories of engineers, A, B, and C. Let's now look at very briefly the one, two, three sectors. Sector one, highly analytical, meet the needs of society. These are people who are not engineers in terms of analytical skills with societal needs outside the bounds of scientific knowledge might include economics and philosophy. What do they? The greatest philosophy on earth, philosophy on earth. 
did he do go to uh, math classes right so everything started working in your head and it is with a super speed meeting the needs of society millions of people follow that philosophy they get complete emancipation right they are meeting the needs of society the group of us economic society right? vector 3 of course in compass that highly creative meeting the needs of society If the artist were not there, the whole world would have been completely great. You would enjoy the beauty. Even now, the certain buildings are a pleasure to see. Of course, there are a lot of reasons what uh, they don't pull up. I'm not saying it's not a good decision or bad decision. I'm not saying it's a good decision. It's beautiful, isn't it? The golden bridge is beautiful, isn't it? Right? So how did they get creative? And of course, some of them now would have been just art <clears throat> turned into uh, the engineers turned into that your product. Secretary may be used to represent those societal needs outside the bounds of scientific knowledge that require both analytical and creative skills, perhaps including public policy, business administration, and music. Music, music. When they write the Giovanni and the Mozart and now you feel it. They only wrote music on a on a script on a on a scene. When they wrote those notes on a script, the analysis, creativity, working together, the sharps and the flats and the octaves and these normal notes, all those things had to blend properly. The analysis was created to the base of music. Engineers cannot ignore the above very real issues of society. Sometimes we say engineers we think we are the greatest. Of course, we are the greatest, but we cannot forget the others who are there: marketing people, economists, public policy makers. They are doing a good job or not is a different matter altogether. If they are not doing a good job. How do you feed them with the correct implements? For them to take to correct public policy, now that is lacking in this. Community. <coughs> I say, man, I'm I'm going to be living there, good engineer. Are we really failing in this country? But we don't feed the policy makers and decision makers. It's all what we know. We think they don't understand. Okay, they don't understand. But the result they will understand. I worked for thirty plus years in the public sector, and they're still working. I'm only teaching, right? I'm not working at a full time job. If we don't give the right directions to the politicians and the public uh, servants for the interface between us and the public at large, they do the wrong. They really look up to us for advice. We the wrong advice. Why? We want to be subservient to these fellows. We think they know better than us. All nonsense. We know better than them. So advise them. If they do the wrong thing, then that's their funeral. If you tell them the correct thing, I guarantee it. With my public uh, long years of experience, I'm telling you, they will be scared to take a decision otherwise, <coughs> but they know. What you are doing is correct. <coughs> they will go and tell everybody, "I did this." Never mind. Let them get the credit. At least let them do the correct thing. If you don't tell them the correct, if you try to want to please these guys, yes sir, no sir, three back, full sir, you are failing. I put in this blame, if you like to say, purely on engineering. We who have failed this time on the development part, of course, they are stubborn. But I have always found to keep on telling the just like what I did for the upper coast. For the second, no upper coast. To keep on telling the correct thing all the time, never change because they want you to change. I never done that. I always stood my. 
can never become a problem for the body. After some time, they see my point. <coughs> then they'll ask me to tell them a scheme how to implement that. What do we do? Most of all, the first objection and then they'll start jumping on your head and getting you to do what they want to do. Are you doing that? What do you want to do? What is the, what is the purpose of your education? What is the purpose of your training? What is the purpose of your church? Think of these things, right? The country will prosper. Engineers are creative problem solvers. Yeah, for a beer? Yeah, for a beer? We make a beer mug out of a waste mug. Don't do that, right? You might die. But we are creative problem solvers. So now coming to more, more and more definitions. The accreditation board, accreditation board of USA for engineers. It's called ABET. This is, they say this is the largest engineering order in the whole world. <clears throat> That's true, huh? That's true. Based in America. The accreditation board of engineering and technology of USA identifies engineering as that profession. So they what they say must be correct. They're not my not my words. That profession in which the knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences gained by study, experience, and practice is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economically <clears throat> the materials and forces of nature for the benefit of man. Look at the difference. I'll leave it there for you to ponder. I leave it there for you to ponder. Mathematics, natural science, experience, practice, judgment. Economics and for the benefit of mankind. So all your decisions have to be in this framework. How to begin this program? While doing Upper Coast Malay, there was a time that there were, everybody was against each other. <clears throat> University of Peradini, I'll tell you now. Call me for a seminar. And the entire university uh, committee was there. There was uh, 500 people. Huge you know, auditorium. Their role, their, their entire purpose was to discredit upper cosplay height itself. They have, we knew that their the students are formed to start shouting, to stop in me, and questioning me, in the background. The seminar went on for about six hours. Started in the morning at about nine o'clock. Went on to about three or three times. After my presentation, there are a whole load of questions. This can be answered. Take the guy and make it. After all, it could be a 25 years. Actually, it was three, about three years ago and the induction. Uh, so there was a guy who stood up and said, Sir Ken Okumbur, what you're learning is absolute life. Kotmala oil doesn't have so much of water. That's all he said. So how much I tried to convince him? He got shouting. He said, you are talking from Colombo. I am living here. I am in Kotmala. I am from Kotmala. I see the Kotmala stream every day in the morning. What are you talking from Colombo? So finally, I couldn't stop this. I was asked, from which faculty are you? He said, engineering faculty. I asked, which? Yeah, I mean, second year. Okay, I said, let's, let's, let's talk it out. Right? Let's talk this discussion. 
<coughs> these meetings are recent. So after the seminar, about six fellows came and surrounded me. You know, no? A small engineer, five feet, two inches, right round, like thugs, they were there. Would they hit me even? Young, fiery fellows, right? So they started asking me all kinds of questions. You're only second year, and so you're here already civil engineer. I'm sure you have not done hydrogen. I'm talking this way because we have analyzed 40 years of hydrological data. And we have come to the conclusion it can do, it can generate 409 gigawatt hours of electrical energy for a year. It's an interesting story, right? So, here after sun, don't make assumptions. Just don't give as an engineer. I'm telling you, as a, don't forget me. I'm a project director of engineering. As a very senior engineer to an engineering system. <coughs> Here are, when you make a statement, you have to qualify the statement in the data. Okay, then 40 years of time. This story is fine. So this guy, I met about three or four years ago at this induction ceremony. ceremony. He came and met me and said, sir, can you remember? I said, no, I can't remember. I am the guy who attacked you. Terrible. Right? And he gave me a And he said, sir, that day you taught me a lesson and I'll never forget in my life. That's what I mean. Scientific, within the realms of scientific knowledge. <clears throat> Second story. 2020. The Japanese ambassador was going to Afakot Malay and I have long retired from the retired from the They called me and said, very important person is coming. Only you can explain about the project. Please come and explain. This was just after the first day of COVID. I still went there. On the 15th, 16th of April, <clears throat> just coming back from the rural area, all those happenings in the hills, all the tournament, everything. <laughs> so I prepared all the slides, went through it, and I presented. And there was one slide that gave from 2012 up to 2020 the generation figures year by year. And somewhere before that, I mentioned it can generate 409 gigawatt hours of energy per year. The same thing I told that other boy also. Two different instances, right? So all of a sudden, the Japanese ambassador asked, you said you can generate 490 watt energy per year. How much have you generated for a year? So, but for this question. Fortunately, there was a guy, a young engineer, I said, can you please help it and give me there? My friend, I told this in the emotion auditorium at the memorial lecture, please look at them. Can you believe? Can you believe? Figure. On that day, the 410 gigawatt hours. Last day, when I gave the university in the, uh, the lecture, I recalculated the 415. I estimate the 409. When do you do that? 1995. <coughs> so it was revised on. So 530, because there were some other peripheral protocols. After giving it up, it came down to 400. This is engineering, man. I'm ready. This is engineering. Never make unnecessary statements without proper verification. This is absolute hydro. I'm not a high one, right? I'm a little bit. So I give all the credit to the irrigation department and the Japanese consultant who did this calculation for me. As I said before, there are seven people making that office. First video. I was only the project great electrical engineer. What do I know about hydrology? 
they did this calculation but what on what on what on after 10 years right so mathematics cannot be defeated i am talking about a, uh, international engineering alliance of which isl is a full member there are few very few members in the whole world there are about 30 odd members they are one of the isl it has three accords and three agreements washington accord sydney accord and dublin accord international professional engineers agreement international engineering technologies agreement and the kenyan agreement for a particular reason <coughs> We are full signal race. I was told yesterday that when we are the we are a signal of signal part. Last year we were a provisional uh, pro provisional uh, when I made this presentation last. We only a provisional member of the full signal of the signal part. We I went to Wellington in 2014 as the president of the ISL. I was very thankful, very. That uh, during my tenure, we got the Washington Accord full signal data. not my own mind not my own effort of many past presidents by this have thought it enough to bring the crown right for their efforts could have had my own contribution as well we are now a signatory let's see what these are i'm not going to go into all the details and we are a full member of the international protocol agreement right these are we give the international pinch after the start For three years or so, you can apply for the international team, and it's accepted by all the signatory countries as equivalent to their own engineers. So, I say it's a full signature of the IEA, it's a full signature of the Washington Accord. It was a provisional signature of Sydney Accord. Yesterday, I heard from the president of IEA sir, and we are a full signature of the Sydney Accord as well. <coughs> The full signature of the international project in this agreement. So don't underestimate the IESL. IESL is placed in the world map in Wellington on 14th of June 2014. When we were granted the full signature status, we were the 15th country in the whole world. To be granted Russian record full signature status, now they are over twenty one. So don't underestimate your next year. Now, <clears throat> several accrediting bodies for engineering. So I'll, I'll skip these things, please, uh, because I'm leaving these uh, presentations. Also, I'll ask some people to uh, tag them into the YouTube or whatever. Possible, you can download this and keep on reading it. But of our interest of time, I'm going. Now, I gave the Abbott definition. In fact, this is even more comprehensive about our own profession. Today, my topic is in the end of. So, what does the IEA, one of the most powerful engineering organizations in the world, got to say? <clears throat> about engineering. We thought they got it. Engineering is an activity that is essential to meeting the needs of people, society, mankind, people. I told you that is the beginning. Economic development and the provision of services to society. That is what we are not supposed to do, man. Sorry, sorry, I keep on telling man. Let's do it. Sorry, people. That's what you and I are supposed to do. Provision of services to society. Engineering involves the purposeful application of mathematical and natural sciences, and a body of engineering knowledge. Now, where is this body of engineering knowledge? <clears throat> can you not tell me? Is there anybody who can tell me define what is the body of engineering knowledge? What is the body of engineering knowledge? Anybody? No, I think most people don't know. You don't support that, man. Where do you have this body of engineering knowledge? Yeah. 
to someone who is going to ask, where is the body of Swami? You can see here. Animated, uh, I am talking now. So there is a body. I have a body. So engine knowledge also has a body. And where is this embodied? The body of engine knowledge. It's very important. Huh? I am harping on this thing so much. The body of engine knowledge is very important. That's what you are supposed to imbibe in. You have to draw strength from the body of engine knowledge. Where is it available? <coughs> Anybody can tell me. Can you? Please. Look up, man. From the universities? Universities? Partly, yes. Not only universities. Where is it? No, no, I am not, I'm not going to agree with that. Yes, universities uh, impart engineering education. So there is a body of engineering knowledge there. Where is it? Where is it? Where is the body of engineering knowledge? You are not even a part of it. Those are listening. Nobody is going to see your face, so please uh, tell what you want to do. Where is do you have this body of engineering knowledge? It's very important. If you, if you do not know from where you get the body of engine knowledge, you are not going to be successful, right? You know where the body of engine knowledge is. Where is it? Where is it? I am very unhappy that you are not giving me an answer. Can anyone tell me where is the body of engine knowledge embodied? You know this? Yes. I will say no. Where else? So you are not in university now? You can't go back to university and study? Get the engineering knowledge? So where can you get the engineering knowledge? Anybody? It's unmute your mic and speak. Left side of the mind. Huh? Left, left side of the mind. Yo, you are being very scientific, man. Nobody can see your left side of the bare mind. Brain. Nobody can see that. So the engine knowledge you should be able to take out, right? From where? It's embodied some. Where? Nowhere. So you are they all? Huh? Society. Yes. Society. I mean, Society. Huh? Are you there? And there we may no na paan ke nikha bekare tiya mambe na zindi na lege ke that is society basse ka society train ka society you get that engine knowledge yeah it is engine knowledge so it is stored some that is called the body of engine knowledge yeah please 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 please, please. you all know this please articulate yeah. All the engineering literature, hundreds of years of technical papers, we still talk about 1922 paper by engineer DJ Vimala Surin, who wrote the, 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 the blueprint for hydropower development in this country. Technical papers. Annual sessions, workshops, seminars, they produce literature. Engineering literature contains the body of engineering knowledge. So why I am saying, harping on that so much? As some of you say, after the university, you forget your engineering knowledge. <coughs> I would say that's only 10 percent 90% of the engineering knowledge is gained. Months in society, I think we made something else. I took it uh, in the lighter way. Yes, the collective knowledge of all the engineers in the whole world now it is so easily ac accessible. Internet and so many documents are there. So, those days when, you, when I, I was doing the masters in AIT in 1981 82, and for me to get some literature about the research that I was doing, I had to set a AMA letter. <clears throat> to my professors all over the place. Right? And get them to 
give me the literature back. It took at least about three, four weeks to communicate. But now you are at a fingertip. You get all the engineering knowledge. So when I had to do literature, sir, you had to go to the library, look at books. And sometimes when they give reference to a certain professor, I write to him, find him, and get down the literature. So now engine knowledge is available at your finger. And you had no business, my dear friends, not to read them and understand. I always tell my junior engineers, 50% of the work you have to devote for reading. How many of you like reading? It's just last Sunday, I was going out with a junior engineer somewhere. <clears throat> and he was amazed. I was talking about something. He asked him singing. So, sir, me, of course, I got to read. I'm not reading. So, what can I say? I'm in that book. And my mother used to tell me, at least read a newspaper. My mother was a teacher. He insisted that I at least read the newspaper. He had a lot of wisdom. <laughs> We think they are much more difficult than our parents, right? It was just last Sunday. The young lady was talking about something and he suddenly said, You look to me, how are you? I read it. And what was the reaction? They opened up the next day. They are thinking and booking in a photography. I am not blaming you guys. Sorry. Thank you. I am not blaming you. At least now start the habit of going through specifications, reading in depth because you may be making a small mistake here and there that can cause a lot of damage, loss of money, loss of life. Right? So, Body of engineering knowledge, technology and techniques, technology and techniques. Knowing the technology is not enough. We have to know the techniques of engineering seeks to produce solutions whose effects are predicted to the greatest degree possible. Like in Abagot Uh 20 years ago, we predicted the energy and I thought a spot on. Possibly in often uncertain context. Train is un uncertain. Weather change is uncertain. But they have proven, right? While we bring in benefits, engineering, while bring benefits, is the toughest part. Engineering activity has potential adverse consequences. That is why when we all start doing projects, we will start objects. Right? The third thing, so we are we are we are digging gold. We are bring heavy machinery. We are a nuisance. We create a mess <coughs> in the society. What for? For their own benefit. Engineering, therefore, must be, therefore, these are all safeguards are there. Therefore, engineering must be carried out responsibly and ethically. That's why you are learning ethics. Use available resources efficiently and be economic. Safeguard health and safety. Be environmentally sound and sustainable. And generally manage risks. Throughout the entire life cycle of the Read that. When you do this, read that. Read that. Read that. It's very important. Engineering is an activity that is essential to meeting the needs of people, economic development, in the provision of services to society. It involves the purposeful application of mathematical and natural sciences and a body of engineering knowledge, <coughs> technology, and techniques. And it seeks to produce solutions whose effects are predicted to the greatest degree possible in often uncertain cases. While being benefit, 
the activity has potential adverse consequences. It therefore must be carried out responsibly and efficiently. Use available resources efficiently and be economic. Safeguard health and safety. Be environmentally sound and sustainable. And then we manage risks throughout the entire life cycle. And I've never seen such a, co more, a more comprehensive definition of engineering than this. So friends, you did not know what your profession is. Up to now, this is your profession. This is what you agree to do. This is what you, le you learn to do. This is what you gather from the job that you are performing right now. This is what you are supposed to do. To office. You spend 30 years, 40 years. I know some engineers who have finished 50 years of his career. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into all the details. These are definitions. These are the definition between the three categories of engineering practitioners. We engineers think we are the only engineering practitioners in the whole world. Wrong. 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 Of course, we are the engineers. We are the engineers. But there are two other categories of engineering practitioners. Don't forget about it. We cannot do our work without these two categories. Who are they? Engineering technologists and engineering technicians. You read this at your leisure. It is found in the International Engineers Alliance website. I'm leaving them in your literature. Read them very carefully. I'm just going through the definitions only. I don't have time to go through all the rest of the tables that are there in this document. I'm leaving it to you. Please read them before the exam. It will only help you to write answers, not only the question that I'm writing, asking you to do but to all the questions that are asked, including the things. Keep this in your back of your mind. What is my role? These are the Washington Accord graduate that we belong to. Though you may, have, you may not have been created, is the degree that is we have to learn. What does it empower you? Apply knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals, and an engineer specialization. These are all written in the document, respectively, to the solutions of complex engineering problems. Complex engineering problems. What are these technologies are supposed to be? All the, the preamble is same, respectively, to define to defined and applied engineering procedures and processes, systems, and methodologies. So they are also supposed to do something. On defined procedures are there. It's prescribed. Who prescribed them, them to them? Engineers. That's me. Yeah. We prescribe them what to do, how to do, and they do it. They are also in new practice. You know, the international job. You may not like it, but they are. Technicians, look at the definition. All that is there to a certain extent. Respectively to wide practical procedures and practices. If they are independently able to do, say, maintaining a car, maintaining a heavy machinery, maintaining roads. Right? When they carpet, they know what to do. The technician. The technologist knows how to use the mix, correct mix proportion. Who decides the mixed proportion? End. You see the genealogy. You see the link from engineer to technologist to the technician. 
unless you understand this, you don't value these three categories. If you don't value the other categories, let me tell you, my friend, you'll be so angry. People will be talking behind your back. Now, these people have been there doing that work over and over again, maybe much longer than you. So know your job properly. Know what you've got to tell your technologist how to do it. Don't ignore them. When they come and ask you a question, explain to them the solution. If, they, if you don't explain the solution to them and you just tell He's like a noisy monkey. You know, go and do it the way that I'm telling you. Don't ask questions. That's the worst thing that you can do. They'll go because they're scared of you. <coughs> and they go and make a mess of it. You get scolded. They, you scold them again. That can go on for a few months, by the way. After some time, they can be holding against you. Know your profession properly. Know your theories properly. Imbibe on the widest body of engineering knowledge that you have. Keep abreast. Continuing professional development is very important for you. We rarely do that. My doctors cannot do without. But the drugs are changing. The physiology is changing. More and more research are coming up. The lawyers cannot do without it because they should know the cases, please. For us, anything, finish the degree, put your legs on, drink a beer, enjoy your life, occasionally go to the office, shout at everybody. I'll tell you, it will be a failure if you do that. Read what is modern techniques, technologies that are coming out of the universities, of the researchers, of the company, large companies who are doing research. Don't forget your education. It's a continuing education. Since I don't have time to go through all these tables, all these tables are there. But one thing I want to tell you, this first cage, there are three cages for the three people. Engineer, technologist and technician. Depth of knowledge. Most fundamental thing that you gain in the news. After that, you practice. You gain knowledge. What for? What for? Another thing that we rarely do. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Nonsense. There's nothing called rule of thumb for engineering. For quick assessment, yes, rule of thumb is there. Rule of thumb is okay for the quick assessment. Not anymore, my dear friend. Not anymore. The key, which is lacking now in most of the engineers, let me read from the international jargon. Cannot be now. I said you are you are supposed to solve complex engineering problems, right? As an engineer, you are supposed to solve complex engineering problems. Technologies broadly defined engineering problems. That's it. Suppose point. Technicians. Well defined engineering problem. Technician know exactly when there is a problem sound in a particular engine, they know what's wrong. Technologists also know. Perhaps you don't. Engineering. So you don't go to the field. You think I say, well, we have a hal in non engineering. We have a hal in. Otherwise, you will not do what they are, others are doing. They know much better things than you do. Sorry. I'll read this again and again. Please read this. Your problems that are encountered by the engineers cannot be resolved without in-depth engineering knowledge at the level of such and such, which allows a fundamental based first principles analytical approach. That is the key. Fundamental based first principles analytical approach. That's what engineering person is all about. I think I'm skipping these things. A whole lot of tables. Please read these tables over and over again. 
right? So they are once again I'm defining the two to three categories are this engineering council of UK, the talk of engineering engineer and the technician engineer and the incorporate engineer or target engineer, right? And technician technician. So they these are the definition of technician and these are the definition of uh, incorporate engineer, that's the technologist. And these are the uh, definition of target engineer. Please read. Please. Okay, you please read the So I'll tell Sanjay to load this. So I'm not going to go into all these details anymore because we have caught up on time. So engineering uh, in society. Engineers inherent interaction with society and societal needs in the last few slides. Leads natural to an engineer's responsibility to society, which includes safety and welfare of the public and of clients, basis of our code of ethics. Professional ethics, legal liabilities of engineers, you should know, environmental responsibility, quality, and communication, whatever you do, my dear friends, you should be able to communicate four ways. You know what the four ways are? You should be able to communicate with your supervisor, senior, superior. He should understand what you are doing. You should be able to communicate to the subordinates. They should be able to understand what you have told them. Your peers should be able to discuss with your peers and get their views and communicate with them. So someday that you may have to go leave and the other guy should know what you have been doing and the stakeholders. You forget about the stakeholders. We are doing this for society. So they come and ask you questions. Be open. Tell them what you are doing. Don't tell them lies. The engineers tell them lies. Then they lose faith in the engineers. I told you right at the beginning. They hold you at high esteem. And you have to prove that you are reliable. Give them the correct knowledge. Communication. So I am going to skip all these things. Then there are four pillars on which your professional stand. Your profession stand. Four pillars. Not three pillars, four pillars. Whatever work you do, you have to be accurate and rigorously accurate. I told you in Upper Kotpane design, we predicted in 2002 after the project was changed. From 532 gigawatt hours, it came out to 409 gigawatt hours. We changed the prediction, the, the forecast, because we gave up some waterfall. We have some water in close to the reservoir. 409. 10 years on. Spot on. Spot on, my dear friends. Spot on. Accuracy, rigorous. Rigorous, be accurate. Honesty and integrity. You cannot compromise honesty and integrity under whatever circumstances. Respect for life, law, and the public good. You cannot make problems for the people from the work that you are doing. <coughs> the drains that you put should be well protected. People should not fall and break their legs. For six months ago, I fell into a brain. I broke my shoulder blade. Still, it, I have some problems. Yes, I'm not telling that was my, my accident. Right? Respect for life, law, and the public good. Responsible leadership. Listening and informing. Listening and informing. Two way communication. Listen to the people. Listen to the subordinates. Listen to the superiors. Listen to the peers, listen to the stakeholders, and give them a proper answer for each of the solutions that you have come out with. What do we need our engineers to do? Listen with an open mind and speak up when required, always in a talking mood. Just not ration words, but speak sense. Write well, clearly and logically write it. 
in whatever they write. Be fiercely careful. Spot your curiosity. No chance for estimate. Estimates, no. Good manners. Be courteous. Well mannered. Please listen to the people. Don't rush up them. You are doing the work for them. Dress well. Another module on dress well. How great. Be smartly dressed to suit the occasion. Of course, if you are going to the field, you can go in sneakers. If you are going to a meeting, don't go in sneakers. You go well dressed. Because people will respect you for the dress also. Read well. But a lot of media, news channels, journals, take me a paper. You have to read, read, read and read. <coughs> of course, that's not some few hard work. So I ask you the question, I will do the challenge. You, you are here, facing a mammoth task. You are given a lot of responsibility. Don't think you are small. And face the challenges, confidently thinking, okay, when you have challenges, face the challenge, confidently thinking, if I can't, who can? Go to the Vedic scriptures, mind, passion, and resolve. Be resolved. I can do it. I'm going to do it. If I can't, who can? Never put yourself in the second place. Always be in the first place. Always be a champion. If I can't, who can? But immediately after you do that, be humble enough to say, if I can, who can? What does it mean? If I can, who can? My subordinate, my peers, I had to share my knowledge, write technical papers. Others should know how you did it. I give, go and give lectures to on Apocotpoli project. I don't hide anything. Let others learn from me. Because if I can, who can? Others should not be able to do what I am doing. So I'll skip these pictures. Who are responsible? Engineers. Who are responsible? Engineers. Who are responsible? In Sri Lanka. Not the people who designed them. They are dead and gone. So who you building? Why did the local government authorities did not warn these people the building is about to collapse? They are building regulations, right? In every local government account, there's a building regulation. Why didn't they tell them? It's one of the worst disasters we in uh, Bangladesh. Look at the number of people watching. You know, Bengalis and Sri Lankans are same. We just saw them yesterday in the match. Don't they look like? And they say that the people we came from West Bengal, Sri Lanka, right? We also like to gather and watch if something happens. We think, of course, in China, we laugh at them. Look at this picture. Where is this? Sakala Piling City, Sri Lanka. Are you going to see what you're Who is this one for is a person of the Basun enemy. Engineering. Last few slides. <clears throat> if technology is centric, if we delegate it to technology and technicians, what we are supposed to do is what we do. But we are prepared to face the challenge. Can we confidently say that we engineers in Sri Lanka will not let down our role as engineers? And I still assure that our chartered engineers, if you are going to aspire to be, are in a position to avoid this kind of disaster. The answer, not in my hands alone, senior hands alone. 
So I will not go into any council, public policy, all these are there. I already gone past my time. So please read the Indian Council uh, Act and have given this in a very summary form, right? So actually, this is not enough to be done by in two hours. I always said that I need two reports. Uh, now that it's there, so this is my last one. Be humble, like a child. Be powerful. He is willing to punch you. A child is willing to punch you. So be a puncher. Not to the society, but set your knowledge. Exert your all your best known techniques for the benefit of man. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any questions, there are a few of them. I'm prepared to answer in a couple of minutes. You can raise your voice. Huh? Okay. Anybody? I'll stop this. No question. Okay, you have been a wonderful, quiet audience. I enjoy studying uh, the people who watch this <clears throat> later on. And I wish you all the best for the week ever. Thank you, sir. That's welcome. You have any questions? You agree with everything that I said, or you don't agree with anything? You agree with everything, huh? Thank you. Okay.